This is our new 630 square foot two bedroom apartment. But it didn't always look like this. This place was pretty much just an empty shell when we first got the keys, with just a fitted kitchen, bathroom and some lights. It's a corner unit and is a humble 628 square feet with two decently sized bedrooms. The larger one facing north and the slightly smaller one, which I'm using as an office, facing west, with the open plan living area and kitchen taking up the rest of the space. So seeing as we're now in a totally new country with absolutely no furniture, this space was a completely blank canvas for us to work with. At the apartment's entrance, there's a really small entryway, but an enormous closet with double mirrored sliding doors around the corner. In here, there's enough space for a stroller, vacuum, mop and shoes. And up top, there's shelving and a clothes rail, where we use S-hooks to turn this into our coat rack. And as there's also a plug here because of the network panel, we found it's also a great place for drying our hair. But the real reason I'm showing you this is because the mirrored doors really make this narrow space feel much bigger as it reflects light into this dark windowless area. And at the same time, it also provides you with an initial glimpse into hands down my favorite area of the home. Full disclosure, we got hooked up with almost everything here from our friends over at Article. But our main goal when creating this space was to make it in the Japani style. Japandi, which isn't a real word, is a combination of interior design styles from two regions, Japan and Scandinavia. And when you mix these two styles together, you're essentially mixing together two unique ways of thinking. On the Japanese side, you have the wabi-sabi ethos of imperfection, impermanence, and incompletion, which can be implemented using hard-wearing natural materials that improve with age and use. And on the Scandinavian side, you have Hyuga, which describes the feelings of warmth, safety, and friendliness that's created by using cozy and inviting items. So by mixing these two styles together, you should end up with a space that's soft yet hard-wearing and cozy yet minimal. When choosing the sofa, we went with this gorgeous Barad loveseat from Article, which is really comfortable for being so compact. And we paired it with a Denman Oak lounge chair, which has quickly become my favorite spot to enjoy my morning coffee. This feeling of Hugo is really easy to achieve by combining richer textures together with this mid-century modern Scandi styled furniture. So in this case, we added in a high pile speckled rug, a soft knitted poof, and a chunky throw for the lounge chair. A soft rug for us was essential as it not only provides a super fluffy surface for our daughter to play on, but it also visually grounds the seating together by partially placing it under the furniture's feet. And along with the chunky throw and Article's soft gray Texa poof, it provides everything you need to cozy up on the sofa. However, although somewhat essential to a pleasant interior, all of this fluffiness can be taken a little bit too far. And as a minimalist, this isn't something that I'm really all that into, but you can rein this back and balance it using contrast. To achieve this, I started considering furniture that you might classify as wabi-sabi. So I opted to pair these items with Article's Oak Senna sideboard and Terrazzo Selena stool, which contrast these softer textures by being hard-wearing natural materials, which when following this wabi-sabi ethos, it's not only more sustainable as these items will last a lifetime, but it's also reassuring to know that they can handle inevitable abuse from our family. To finally make sure that this area doesn't feel too empty and devoid of character, we finished it with sculptural and more visually delicate elements such as Article's contemporary Jira floor lamp and vases with dried flowers. And to make sure that this space smells as good as it looks, we added in an essential oil diffuser that adds a little bit of movement to the space too. For the fitted kitchen, we had to work with a somewhat questionable industrial aesthetic where, for some reason, the designers decided to go for exposed chrome legs and short wall cabinets that are pretty much good for nothing except from trapping dust. On its own, this space looked pretty sterile, so we realized that to counter this, we needed to add items that add warmth and softness. For the breakfast island, we added in these article oak and tan leather Essa counter stools that tie themselves into the hard wearing natural material palette of the living area and also help to blur the boundary between these two spaces. 
Above the brushed metal fridge, we added in two wicker baskets for additional texture and some handy storage, as well as an unkillable golden pothos plant on top of the cabinets, which should slowly trail its way down the side to add some more colour and life to this area. For the countertops and shelves, our only rule was that we leave out only the items that we use regularly and the ones that we enjoy the look of, so we decided that by spending more on essential kitchen items and accessories that either add character or warmth, it actually allows their functionality to be doubled, as these items can serve as decoration to an otherwise empty surface, which is ideal if you live in a small apartment like ours and want to avoid the build-up of clutter. Next to the living area is the spare bedroom, which is where I chose to set up my office. Here I have my incredibly minimal zero cable setup, which you should definitely watch the video of if you haven't already, and this too continues to follow this Japandi aesthetic by using natural and hard wearing materials, and a chair that feels warm and contemporary rather than futuristic and corporate. By having this whole setup on casters, it allows me to use this room for multiple purposes, which is crucial in small spaces as it's not only now a spare bedroom, but also a YouTube studio, workspace, and bedroom for our daughter, who sleeps in a cot that can be moved to wherever's the quietest area of the home. In the closet, there's also ample room for all of her clothing and all of my camera gear, which is currently an organized mess right now, as well as other items such as bags, boxes, and stacking countertop stools for when we have guests over. Off this room, I can also access our small balcony, which is also accessible from the living area, where we're yet to really focus on this space, but we have really enjoyed using it for meals with a durable four-person outdoor table and some black outdoor rattan chairs. The apartment's bathroom is located off the entryway and honestly, although it's pretty tidy, there's not that much to see here, except that almost all of our toiletries fit in these two drawers underneath the sink. But finally, in the bedroom, we've kept things really minimal with a bright white and beige material palette that's provided with character through the contrasting textures of the linen sheets, high pile rug, and canvas headboard. And the only items that I strictly keep on my side of the bed are a white noise machine, alarm clock, and Kindle. And on Nietzsche's side, she has a basket where she keeps a throw and her phone on charge. In the closet, we can fit both of our wardrobes, where I now honestly keep very little on the top, and Nisha has drastically reduced her wardrobe size, which has been really impressive to witness. In small homes and apartments, it can be a challenge striking a comfortable balance between functionality and appearance. However, by cleverly utilizing space and implementing overlapping functionality, I think it makes it quite achievable to have a beautiful and clutter-free home, even as parents. And for us, this soft yet hard-wearing Japandi aesthetic strikes this balance perfectly. We still have a lot planned for this space as we still don't have a TV or any art and plants and there are a few things that I still have to show you, but we are already in love with how this place feels. And honestly, we wouldn't have been able to make this work without Article, who made this whole process incredibly easy with super fast delivery and mostly pre-assembled furniture. With great prices on products that are high quality and designed to last, I couldn't recommend Article enough. So have a browse of all of our furniture using the links down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.